Welcome back to another episode of Mystery Garage. Today is Wednesday, and every single Wednesday, we hop back into Project Stepchild. We got a lot of work to do, so let's get to it. Welcome back to another episode of Mystery Garage. I'm very blessed to have a lot of new viewers joining the channel, so I just wanted to cover it off one more time. Uh, this channel doesn't really jump from project to project, in case you're new to the channel. Every single Wednesday we release a new episode on Project Stepchild, which is a 1980 rabbit that I, uh, I picked up about eight months ago, give or take, and uh, we got to work on making this my true dream car. So every single Wednesday, tune in for more and more work to get this done. And we're really starting to move ahead now that uh, we got most of the chassis work finished. We're gonna start throwing parts at it and start building this car real quick. Uh, on Sundays, uh, I have a collection of a few other cars and some other people who are bringing me their cars to work on. We start doing a lot of different things on Sunday just to keep things fresh, have a little bit of fun. But it, it always is Volkswagen content. Uh, in the summer, we'll start doing car shows once the weather gets nicer and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but that's kind of how the channel is laid out. So when you come into the home screen of the channel, you're gonna see projects to choose from, uh, past and current videos, uh, as we go through each particular build that we have going on here at Mystery Garage. So you're welcome to look at those. Uh, I also created a new tab that shows the most current video, just in case it's hard to follow. But everything does follow into a category, so if you click on the, um, on the playlist, you'll start to see what we got going on around here. So um, again, every Wednesday, more work on this car. Every Sunday, we do something a little fun, a little different. And I can't wait till the summer, we'll start doing a lot of cruise videos, a lot of driving videos, a lot of upgrade videos. We'll have different cars show up on the channel and that kind of thing. So that's exactly what the Blue Rabbit was last week on Sunday. Um, so stay tuned for a lot more to, to happen on that day as well as an entirely different lineup of cars as time goes on. So thank you very much to everybody who's new to this channel. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe for lots more content like this. And everybody who's been around since the beginning or has joined in the last little while, thank you very much. For all the love and support in the community we've been getting. This has been awesome and I've been having so much fun doing it. So today, uh, without further ado, let's hop back into Project Stepchild and make a ton of progress and keep moving this project forward. Let's get to work. Okay, so here's a quick rundown of where we are. Uh, this car I got, what I thought to be really early on, was a fairly rust-free shell. Once I started stripping it down, look just like a lot of you will do with your Mark 1s, you're going to run into you know, rust in this and that area that you didn't really foresee. So that's exactly what we did here. We ended up doing a front hole rad support swap uh, with a different uh, front cut I had, cleaning all that up. Uh, we did all the inner wheel well uh, reconditioning and that sort of stuff. We did the same thing underneath the car. As you can see there, the hole underneath the car is all uh, in really, really good shape now. We cleaned it all up, we POR'd it, we undercoated it. We did something similar in the interior where everything is now POR'd and cleaned up and ready to go. We did a lot of uh, small metal work replacement. We replaced this rocker on this side. We did something similar on the other side, obviously, because we had that uh, damage issue. Uh, a little bit of rust repair in the back there. We undercoated each of the wheel wells. So again, everything is looking mint. Um, and so we're almost at the stage where we're ready to start throwing stuff at it. So in preparation for that, we went through the whole bay and did a bay shave. This job is not fully done yet. We got a lot of little minor stuff I want to take care of but we'll leave that for a future episode yet but we're getting to the point now where I want to make sure that all of the bodywork is ready and taken care of so today to move everything forward um, I want to grab all the missing pieces I want to grab the doors the fenders the hood and start laying it all on the car and double checking those items because we haven't looked at them since we took them off uh, you know six months ago or whatever it was so it's time to you know bring those things back, take a look at it, make sure there's no metal work on those items to be taken care of, hang them on the car, make sure we're ready, ready, really happy with the way they lay out. Again, I've said it before, I'm not gonna be doing the paint on this car, um, but I wanna make sure that the body is more or less ready to go for paint work. I don't wanna be surprised with anything down the road. So let me gather all those parts and we'll take a look at them. 
All right, here we are. I went and grabbed everything from storage and <laughs> you can tell I haven't looked at it in forever. This stuff is super dusty. Uh, it's all kind of dirty now. And you know, I did forget uh, a little bit of the condition. I can see now that I've grabbed the door, there's a bit of rust down there. So we're probably gonna have to take care of that. Um, I took these doors off fully loaded. So they still have the glass on them. They still have the interior panels in them. So we're gonna have to take all that stuff off and uh, start looking at hanging this back on the car um obviously i'm going to take care of that rust before we hang it uh, but we'll get to work on all of this stuff again i picked up back in the day if you were a very early viewer of this channel you remember that i did replace these uh fenders with uh ones we got from a scrapper uh because these fenders are in way better condition than the original red ones uh, the original red ones were all bombed out uh rusted and that sort of thing so i picked up these these are uh, actually off a, a 92 i believe um, in way better shape, um, don't need any rust repair, just need a little bit of cleanup, um, and obviously bodywork and paint, but um, in, in a lot better shape. And it was way cheaper just to buy uh, OEM ones uh, rather than it was to, to uh, try and fix the old ones or repair the old ones. And again, these aren't aftermarket uh, fenders, these are OEM uh, fenders from Volkswagen. Uh, original hood, original doors. Like I said, you can kind of see that's some rust repair to do there. And there is a crack in the paint and again i never trust that kind of stuff so we're gonna have to grind that down make sure there's nothing hidden behind that crack because generally metal doesn't crack that means there's some sort of surface filler on that door uh, hopefully we can still keep the door depending on how bad it is being the fact that this is the side uh, the car was tapped previously um, i do kind of anticipate uh, i would have hoped they would have just changed the door out but i hopefully there's not too much repair uh, necessary on this door but you never know uh, when you get in old cars like this things can pop up the other thing that came up uh, that I didn't really talk about when I was doing the wheel wells is this um, I was saying back then that oh my god the chassis has no more rust I'm so happy there's no more rust on the car well when I was doing the wheel wells um, if you know me well enough or been watching the channel long enough I don't let things sit I saw the smallest bit of bubbling in here on the outer part of the fender and I was like well I can't leave that alone. So I started tackling it. Before I knew it, I was at this stage cutting out the metal and rebuilding the inner structure and everything. And then I POR'd it all and we undercoated the fender well. Um, but I left this now somewhere here. Let me find it one second. Okay, there we are. Just like I did in the Jetta episode, if you guys remember that or watched that episode, uh, I ended up getting this set up and we'll be ready to uh, weld this replacement panel in now that it's POR'd behind it, and we'll be ready to go. So at some point today, we'll tackle that as well. Uh, I don't know if I'll show a ton of that because you guys have seen a ton of rust repair on this channel before, and we do already have to tackle that little bit on the door. So uh, rather than making this a whole nother rust repair episode, um, I'll probably tackle this one quickly and I'll do uh, this little repair off camera. Anyways, first things first, let's start taking these doors apart. You can see, obviously these door handles have what is it, almost 40 years of age on everything. Um, and somebody at some point has tried to break into that handle or got frozen shut or something in the winter time, who knows. Um, but I have all new hardware. Again, if you guys watch the unboxing episodes of this channel, got new flag mirrors, um, I have new handles, a whole bunch of new hardware to throw in this car, so all this stuff isn't necessary. Uh, but for those of you that do notice, I do have uh, the vent windows in both of these doors which is an awesome thing to keep. The glass isn't unglued, which is common in these. They usually pop off. Um, these ones are in great shape. So we'll be keeping those in the doors. So I'll just keep the glass in the doors. I'll just roll the glass down. Um, but again, all the other stuff is gonna come off. Mirrors off, handles off, trim off, uh, all that sort of stuff. Hood looks to be in pretty good shape. I don't see anything wrong with this other than it's uh, pretty filthy. Um, underneath the hood, there's some small little flicks of rust, but we'll probably deal with that with POR to make sure that doesn't spread. And again, these fenders are in pretty good shape because I picked these up myself. So um, let's get to work. We'll start pulling apart these doors. Man, doesn't it serve me right? Every time, every single time, Murphy's Law, when I talk about something positive on this car, it goes the other direction. First things first, I talked about, hey, 
Oh, my vent windows aren't unglued. The vent window fell out. Gee, man. Next thing, oh, my windows are all good. No, they're not. As you can see right here, this window regulator, which is what they call the part that goes up and down, is completely bombed out. And the window in the store, which is still there, is loose. I can manually move it. So we're gonna pull out all the guts for the windows anyways, but I'm gonna have to get a new window regulator. We're gonna have to deal with the annoying fact that this glass is unglued. Um, I'm not even gonna mention the other one because same thing's probably gonna happen. Although this is a cabrio bolt through. So at some point in time, somebody has changed this vent window. Um, and that being said, this window, the door, the inside of the door, which is the driver's side door in North America. So the opposite side, it's this side door, the opposite side of the crash damage. This door looks like it's been resprayed before because you can see the red is not consistent. You can also see they painted the regulator rod uh, whereas on a factory old door, regular rod is not painted and the door doesn't seem to have weird discolorations as much as this one does. You can see how bright the red is right there. Anyway, and you can see they also painted over the regulator cable right there. So all kinds of weird stuff going on. Um, not really sure until we start deep diving into it, but I'm gonna take the guts out of both doors for the windows anyways. First things first is we need to peel out uh, the weather strip here. Another good point to talk about with these doors when you're doing a cleanup like this um, is talking about drains. So when your door is flipped over, let's use this car for example. When the window is up, because I got the window down right now, but if the window is up, rainwater hits the window and is supposed to be prevented by these what they call scraper seals that go across the window so water doesn't get down. Now. Remember, these things aren't absolutely foolproof. There's absolutely certain some water is gonna end up down into the door. <clears throat> so what happens is, just like my door did, if you don't let the water drain out properly, you're gonna get some rust in this section here, or you're gonna get rust in this section here. Now, why that happens is because the doors are built to accept some rainwater. If you live in a rainy area, let's say that, and if you live in the Pacific Northwest, uh, like I do, up or up in Canada, rain is definitely a given, as it is right now. Um, so we need to be conscious of that when you're doing your door work. So down in the bottom of these doors, I've peeled out the weather stripping by the way, there's drains. See how these drains are all clogged? That's why this door rusted right on the other side of this, right here, there's rust. Because this was clogged, it retains water, Inside hasn't been painted as well as the outside of the car, so you're gonna get some rust in there. So we're gonna clean out these, uh, almost these gutter drains, let's say. And then I'm gonna also gonna wire brush this whole inside where the seal normally goes. Same thing on this door. This door luckily doesn't have any rust on the outside. Again, shouldn't say that, knock on wood, because it's gonna happen. Uh, here there's a drain, and here there's drains. Now these two drains should be cleaned. Now there's a bunch of glue from the weather strip I peeled off. Now again, we're going to restrip both these doors or re-weather re strip both these doors when the time comes. But enough talking, let's get this glass out and we'll start working on repairing the rust right there. And there we have it, fully got a door, all the glass taken out. Let me show you. Everything taken out, um, both sides, minus the inner handle, which I can remove in 20 seconds is pretty easy. Um, but there we go, just the metal of the door, everything appears to be in good shape. But again, like I said, I'm gonna give it a cleanup. Here's everything that came off of it. Um, again, the uh, quarter window missing the glass because <laughs> it fell off. Um, the full glass is actually in really good shape, so uh, I don't have to worry too much about that. It needs a major cleanup though. Let me just move this door here. Talk about everything here. So, um, scraper strips, again, those will need to be replaced. They're completely dried out. Uh, this can be fixed, the glass can be re-glued, but I don't like the fact that, um, I'm not sure I fully explained my story, but 
You can see this one is a glue in. This is an early uh, vent window, whereas this is a later vent window that actually got screwed in because that glue was such a problem. Um, but these screws are all bombed out from rust too. But uh, that's kind of the difference. You can tell because this will have this glass will actually physically have holes in it where these go. So this is a later model. And you can see it was also riveted in where the older versions were bolted in. Um, so something's been happening to this door. Or something has happened to this door at some point. Um, it could even be off a different car. I'm not sure, but anyways, those are the differences there. Um, so I don't like the fact that they are different. We're gonna have to fix them. Since this one needs to be fixed anyways, I would like to keep the early model if I can. I might go over to uh, Cabrio for both doors just because these are more reliable. I don't know, we'll see. Um, but anyways, uh, regulator is pretty good. Don't have to worry about that. Uh, if anything, if, you know, if your window when it goes up and down um, doesn't go up and down very clean, you can clean or grease this cable uh, that allows your window to move a little bit more freely. Um, these could just need a really good clean. Again, these are called window regulators. Um, and I think mine's just fine. This is the part that pinches your glass. Uh, you can see it's completely rusted. But it's supposed to pinch your glass between this with the seal and then it bolts to the regulator. Um, where is that tab? Right here actually, bolts right there. And this goes up and down with the window. This thing is completely toast. I'll need to find a new one or salvage one out of another door I have. Um, but that's gone and that clips to the bottom of the window or holds the bottom of the window. This window is just dirty and needs to be cleaned and uh, That's about the extent of it. So I'm gonna go ahead And do this other door and I will see you in about two seconds There we are all done. It's crazy to think how packed with stuff these doors are You gotta think of all this stuff was on the door That's a glass and the quarter windows and the regulators and the trim and all this stuff all the weather stripping and door cards and handles and mirrors and all that sort of stuff. Lots of moving pieces, so we gotta put it all together. A lot of this stuff I'll be replacing. Um, a lot of this stuff I already have replacements for. Some of that stuff is brown stuff, which I like to keep. Um, if you look at the differences here, like this window uh, handle is black, but a lot of these trim pieces are brown and that goes with these door cards. So we're gonna make sure we keep all of them together as well as um, some of the stuff that we may be using from this, like obviously the glass and that sort of thing we'll be keeping, the regulators I might try and clean up. If I can't get these ones to clean up really well, I might grab something else from my stock if I got it and we'll kind of figure out what we got here and what we can use. But anyways, uh, onto the doors. Doors are now fully stripped, it's just the tin. Um, so I'm gonna get to work on that right there. We'll get that all sorted with. I flipped over the hood and took a look at it. It's looking pretty good. Um, not a lot of issues to complain about there. There's a little bit of surface rust stuff here which we'll clean up and POR it, but it's nothing crazy at all. Just simple stuff. Fenders, nothing really. I mean, there's little, little bits like that, but again, we'll clean that up, we'll POR that sort of stuff. So underneath the paint, when it comes to body work, everything's gonna be well taken care of. All right, let's get to work. finished up there I had to actually do uh, both sides because for anybody who doesn't know the skin of the door comes around and laps around and is bent over top of the door frame the frame of the door was rusted through here as well as the skin on top and underneath so I had to cut out basically the whole thing I kept part of it to get the, the shape of the, or the form of the door and then once I had it I flipped the door over I cut it out and then I went ahead and re redid that as well at some point I'll show you the other side when I have more hands but um, so all new metal through here, both sides, um, everything is all ready to go. Now I'm definitely convinced now that seeing this door, it's got a skim of filler on it. I'm con convinced this entire car has been repainted at some point in its life, which is probably why it looked better than you would think a car sitting outside would look. 
It's probably because it had a, had a respray at some point. And again, this is the driver's door. So this is the side that's here, which is not the side that had the impact. So at some point, this car has been dressed and resprayed. So a lot of this filler, there's no dents or any damage under there. There's just a thin um, skim of it. So they were just doing it to bodywork it before paint. So um, I am now fully convinced this car has been repainted at some point in its life. Anyways, um, now that everything's fixed up and ready to go, let's go ahead and hang it on the car. bolted up and man if this doesn't hit you in the fields I don't know what will I'm so excited this is obviously energizing this is a great day let's take a look So what do you guys think? It is such an energizing feeling to have, uh, you know, the car put back together, be able to look at it complete. We've, this chassis has come a long way. We've gone from rust repair to crash damage to undercoating the entire interior, changing out the rad support, changing out the scuttle panel, redoing both sills, um, doing the interior. So much work has gone into this chassis. Today is a very good moment and a very good feeling to see it all put together. I know there's a lot more to do, uh, but these panels actually fit pretty well. There's going to be some fidgeting with some of the panel gaps and that sort of thing, but I'm very happy with how things have come together. Um, you know, ultimately, this project is going to really start coming together in the next little while, even without paint. Uh, we'll get as much of it together as we can and get it ready for paint. So that's about it for today's episode. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Look for lots more on this car every single Wednesday coming straight to you. But thanks very much for watching. Until next time, take care. Oh,